I actually finished the year last year, 2015, really strong. Leading into the 2016, you know, showed up in February at the U.S. National Championships. I won that. Uh, you know, went to the first World Cup of the year in Argentina. I took second. You know, everything was just trending in the right direction. And then I was training for World Cup round two. Put my hand out to brace for a fall and broke my wrist. So I had surgery April 9th. I never take pain med medicine and I, I took the pain pills for this. It was so painful. I saw another doctor just to get a second opinion. This was even worse. He said there was no chance. You know, at that point in time, we had no idea if A, I was even going to be healthy enough for the Olympics or B, if I was going to make the team. And then with Nick Long getting third at the Worlds, it kind of threw a wrench into the whole thing because now Corbin Shaw and myself, we were both, you know, the next two best guys to make this team. But if he didn't win the Olympic trials, how were they going to decide between the two of us for the last coach's selection spot? Ultimately, he ended up winning, which left me the clear choice as the coach's selection. And at that point in time, we had eight weeks before the Olympics, and I had to prove to the U.S. team that I was healthy enough to ride. My wrist was still broken, but I had, if I wanted to race at the Olympics, I had to start riding. So I had a special custom brace made, and I basically just rolled the dice that I wasn't going to crash again, because if I, I crashed again and I hurt my wrist, then uh, could have been some permanent damage there. My plan all along was I was going to do everything I could for the Olympics because when, I, when I'm 40, I don't want any regrets. Kind of just put everything in my life on hold for those eight weeks and just tunnel vision and just move forward. All I have to do is get into the final. And then when you're in the final, all you got to do is, is one race. I got fourth in the time trial. I won the first moto. I got third and fourth in the next two. And the, the third semi, I knew I needed anything but eighth to guarantee me into the final. In the second jump, a Dutch rider, uh, he actually hit me from behind, causing my bike to go all sideways. And I landed at like a, a 45 degree angle to the track. I don't know how I didn't crash. I cruised on for sixth in that lap, which allowed me passage to the final. But, you know, before that final, after that, I knew I was going to be an outside gate pick. Right before the main, the mechanic was looking my bike over and my chain tensioner on my drive side was completely wrecked. But there wasn't enough time to fix it. And he didn't want me to know about it because he didn't want me to stress. So he just wrenched the bolt down and said, here you go, your bike's good. <laughs> my trainer, Sean, he came up to me before the final and he said, hey, Connor, do you remember London four years ago? Do you remember how you felt and how you felt every day since then knowing that you lost that opportunity. I never had felt anything like this before. It triggered something inside of me. Like I was having like pangs in my stomach, like I wanted some food. And that is what kind of locked me in to that zone before that race, because I didn't want to feel that way. So I'm lining up in the gate for the Olympic final. And it's a really cool feeling this time around because I'm just present and focused and so relaxed. You know, it's that, that zone that you try to get into every day, like when you're racing. Like that's what you're trying to get into, but only a couple times in your life can you truly, truly get into that, that deep of that zone. Best gate of my life, I was the fastest down the hill. You know, I, I hit the bottom of the hill and I looked up and I didn't see anybody. Start moving over. Nick, uh, my teammate, comes up in, in the inside. We go into this first turn. And I'm settled in behind him and I'm in second. And so in that position, it's like the question that you often think to yourself at night, if I'm in second, do I risk it all for the gold or do I settle for second? But in that moment, I didn't even have to think about it. I just switched into autopilot and autopilot is I'm a racer. So I just raced. I just tried to get around him on the second straight. We collided, we bumped, settled back. Out of the second turn, I saw him fade to the left side of the track. So I went to the right side of the track. Now, I had spent extra time in practice on that third straightaway because that is where I'd identified is going to be a good position and a good spot to try to pass. And so I just charged at that straightaway. I hit the step up perfect, pulled up. I 
hit the next double perfect right beside him. Hit the next double perfect and I'm in the lead. And there's like a split second moment into the final turn when I kind of realized I'm winning the Olympics right now. But I was able to instantly kind of bring it back because there's another straight left to go. And I got through that straight, I got over the last roller, and it was like, I just won the Olympics. There was a moment when I sunk to my knees and I just kind of, kind of started realizing that I just won the Olympics. And I, I couldn't even stand it. It was just, I, I can't even start to describe it. I'm a big believer in the fact that everything happens for a reason and everything can be a lesson if you let it. And so with losing London, I learned that I have some stuff to work on and that maybe I'm not bullet. Would I change a thing? I mean, in fantasy land, yeah, I win every race that I was ever in. But would things work out the same if you change even one event? Maybe not. So I can't say that I'm upset with the way anything's turned out.